We stayed a couple of days at the Kingfisher Bay Marina in uh, Demopolis, Alabama. Chris's brother was able to come and see us. He was driving home from Virginia and was a and able to come through Demopolis and took us to dinner. That was fun. Uh, the next day we used the courtesy car and we did provisioning and um, drove around the Demopolis a little bit because we were going to be on anchor for the rest <laughs> for the rest of the week and we were on anchor for a long time. And Laura drove us off the pier again out of the slip. She did a good job. Yeah, it's when he always gives me the easy ones, I think. <laughs> But since they're the easy ones, then I, I, I look like I'm doing well. But it's fun. I, I'm glad I'm doing it. Well, you do it. You gotta do it. You gotta <laughs> learn. You gotta do it sooner or later. Yeah, that's you true. practice on the easy ones. That's true. And so after this, we went to, once we got out of the marina, we went through the Demopolis um, uh, lock. And we had a, a, float, a little flotilla of probably six boats, I think, were in our little group. Yeah, and this marina was a good one. It had a big wide opening, and we got out into the, into the river there. Um, this marina also had a really good laundry room, <laughs> if, you're, if you're interested in that. <laughs> Well, we're still here on this little end ditching off the Tom Bigby. And uh, you can see Indigo Seas is next to us still. And uh, it's not too bad, but the fog gets a little worse as you go towards the river. So we're not going anywhere for a while. It's about 7.30. We're going to have the winds blowing a little bit, I feel. So maybe this fog will blow away. But you can see... You have to see your your plans. We were going to leave at 7.15 this morning, but now we can because we would be run over by a barge. Edna 2 was our first anchorage after we left Demopolis, and it was a good, it was a good anchorage. It was off the channel, and I felt very safe all night. So the fog finally lifted, and, and we started down the river, but you can still see some mist on the water um, turned out to be a beautiful day um, once the once the breeze came up enough to to take off some of that that fog we were warned that this phone booth was out in the middle of nowhere on the river and there it was I was happy to see it there are some places on the river that um, loopers talk about like don't wait you can't wait till you get to this you know watch out for this and one of those was the phone booth and then these are the white cliffs of eeps which are um, chalk deposits uh, just similar to the white cliffs of Dover that are in England and they were very impressive they were very tall in places and um, they were just just a really cool sight Most of the rivers is just trees, <laughs> it's, it, but it's pretty. But you can tell here how low the river is. The, um, the bank of the river that you see here should be underwater. This time we're at an anchor called Leroy 2, I think, which is just a little side of the channel here. And uh, that's a barge that just went past us or coming towards us, it's hard to tell. But we're very close to shore here. And, uh, but we're in like 12 feet of water, you know, right here. So it's all good. And there's a barge coming down. We're on anchor. Our anchor is out forward of us here. And Riker's anchor is downriver, so we're not going to 
swing out into the river. And there's the toe coming. And he's here. Laura's got her little LED tiki lights out. And there's a couple of guys in a sailboat that have been following us all day right down there. And that's down the river. And we've got about a hundred miles to Mobile Bay. And we're going to divide it up into three days, I think. Because we don't want to get to Mobile Bay today's Thursday. we got to get there Sunday. Because Saturday is going to be stormy. We don't want to do that. And that blue, that, that thing right there in the middle is the green marker. So that's the other side of it is the channel. So we're off the channel here. And it's going to be kind of a gloomy night, I think. So we're rafted to um, Riker. And I really like rafting this way. So we're anchored, we're anchored um, bow to stern. So we both have our anchors out in front of us. And it keeps us from swinging. And then we're able to get on and off each other's boats pretty easily and have dinner and, you know, have a good time together. So I like it also because you just untie and then you move forward, <laughs> each, each moving forward. So we're going in opposite directions and you get your anchor and you get off, you get off your anchorage and you head on down the river. couple miles north of the Coffeeville Lock so the river's gotten a little wider here now and we're in this little creek coming in anchored up in the uh, what's it called again Laura? Okatupa. Okatupa. The Okatupa. The Okatupa Creek and it is unbelievably nice it is deep. We're like, I'm 10 feet of water right here. And it's 10 feet over by the edge. It's almost a sheer cliff in here. And uh, there's a few trees that are falling around the edges, but we stayed away from them. And we've got a beautiful view, a beautiful evening. It's warmed up. We all had our t-shirts on this afternoon. So, super nice. Indigo Seas got here first. They're anchored up here. You can see kind of the trees falling in the water here, but there's still plenty of room. And the creek goes back up into here. So, some overhanging branches, but there's not a real problem. And indigo seeds pulled up and tied over that tree. And it's just pure Bigfoot country right here. We haven't seen one yet, but I'm sure they're here watching us. And it uh, doesn't get any better than this, y'all. This is nice. Nice weather, beautiful day. Got a creek anchored in. It's beautiful. Okay, another morning, another fog. We're in uh, another uh, anchorage here. This is the same one from last night with the Ola Walla or whatever it is. But uh, this, this was a great spot. It's super deep in here. And uh, the fog, it's cold this morning, so there's fog, but it's lifting off. And we're approximately five miles from the lock. And we're talking to the lock right now to find out what time he wants us to try to get there. So we're, uh, we're all up and ready to go. We just gotta wait for the conditions in the lock. Apparently there's a lot of northbound traffic on the other side of the lock that's coming through so we may be delayed a little bit this morning uh, but uh, we had a beautiful night and I highly recommend this spot it's big open and very deep well we were locked in with fog this morning and um, so we weren't able to get out where we wanted to so I called the lock uh, coffee bill lock and we knew there was a downbound tug and an upbound tug I said when do you need us when would you like us there well, I'll give you a call on the radio. So we got a call on the radio. He said, if y'all can get down, if y'all can start moving now and get down here, I can get y'all through. 
because he knew it was about a, it's going to be about an hour for us maybe maybe not quite that long from our anchorage so i said okay we'll do it and chris timed it i think it was less than five minutes we had three boats rafted it was us and Riker and indigo seas and we were unrafted our anchors were up and we were in the channel by in within less than five minutes <laughs> We are in our last lock of the loop. I can't believe it. So this is the Coffeeville lock on the Tom Big B waterway. We have a small little flotilla that we ended up in. I think we have six boats. Um, there is a Sea Ray 390 beside us. It's Bullet. They are from Houston also. <laughs> so we chatted with them while we were waiting outside the um, outside the lock. We, chatted with them so so they are um, we haven't seen them yet before today but they're finishing up their loop same as us so I can't believe this is the last lock I'm very happy it is but it's a little I don't know a little sentimental maybe so we've gone through about 200 locks I believe is the number that we've gone through on our loop because we did, as you remember, we did the um, Champlain route um, it, going into Canada, and then we did the Rideau, and all of that um, added to our lockage. <laughs> but this, so we've gone through about 200 locks. We haven't counted them up exactly, but I know we're close. I know we're at 200 or more, somewhere in there. But it's it was a it was an easy lock to do, and I guess we got better at them. <laughs> now is we're ending but so I'm glad that this is the last one but it just means we're closer to the end I will say that for people that are thinking about doing the loop and they're considering getting worried about the locks they really once you get through a few of them that you get down to a good system and they just become easier and easier so I know I was so worried and nervous about them for so long but um, but we really, you know, you get a system and, and it just becomes easier and easier. Bullet did not wait around. They left the lock and took off. I guess they want to get back to Houston today. Okay, the trek continues. Another triple anchorage tonight. We are in um, Tinsaw River. Not very far in the river. The trees past that opening there or is the actual Tom Bigby waterway. So we pulled off in here, there's plenty of room, plenty of depth, and we all three anchored up and fixed to have spaghetti for dinner. Linda on uh, Indigo Seas and I have been fishing all afternoon, didn't get a bite. So I'm sure this is the fish's fault, not ours. And uh, it's a beautiful evening, it's warm. I'm in my bathing suit, barefoot. And you see, this is just gorgeous here. Fish have been jumping all around us and we can't catch one. Still as, still as can be, not a breath of wind. It's supposed to be calm most of the night. And uh, we're going to, uh, we haven't decided exactly what's gonna happen. We are about uh, 53 miles from Mobile here and another 25 miles from Mobile to the wharf or Lulu's or the intercoastal waterway on the east side of Mobile Bay. So we're thinking we're going to go 40 miles tomorrow, which is not quite to Mobile Bay and spend the night again. And then we'll have 40 miles from that point to Lulu's or the wharf there on the east coast of Mobile Bay Intercoastal. And we can either make a day of it all the way there or stop at some place and uh, uh, Bear Hope or Mobile or whatever. Just whatever floats our boat, I guess. Literally. So we don't know exactly where we're getting close. A couple days and we'll be at our uh, 
crossing of the waypoint. But we're doing good. We've got plenty of gas, plenty of water. Everybody's doing good. And uh, we've really enjoyed this evening out here. I hope the bugs don't come out. It is 75 degrees or so. It's beautiful. Well, good morning. I know this looks similar to last night, but uh, this is the next morning. We had a, uh, a great dinner and ducktails last night with Cotty and Swin on Riker and Simon and Linda on Indigo Seas. Their Linda Indigo Seas is finishing up their loop in Mobile too. So we're both getting ready to cross our wake. And uh, it's rainy again this morning. It rained yesterday morning until about noon. And it rained hard. It's not quite as hard today. We're on this beautiful anchorage here on the Tinsaw River. Everybody's still in bed. It's early. It's maybe 6.15, 6.20. It looks more daylight on the camera than it does in real life. But, uh, I'm going to be sad for this to end. It's been a... It was really nice having a goal. You know, we just had to make it to the next place and make it to the next place and we knew that we were very far from the end I meaning we easily went 7500 miles easy but uh, I'm going to be sad for it to end that's for sure I don't know if you can hear it on the camera but there's duck hunters all around us on the off in these woods or in these they're not here but you can hear them shooting boom 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 so they're in these marshes down here there's a lot of this is basically a big swamp area where it where all these waterways inland waterways drain into mobile bay It's just beautiful out here. I never imagined um, that it would be so rural everywhere. It's really pretty. So leaving an anchorage in the rain is, is never a fun thing. It was raining really hard and um, so and so we weren't wearing our headsets because we were worried that they would stop working but so I was driving and Chris was working on the the anchor um, Riker went off first got left the anchorage first and then we untied from indigo seas and and started uh, pulling anchor um, it was I was a little worried <laughs> about getting too close to to indigo seas I'm still not super confident with what I do but it was, like I said, it was absolutely pouring. So Chris was sweet and he did the, the anchor and I, and I got to stay inside dry, <laughs> which I appreciated. But I guess I'm getting better at this, or at least a little more comfortable and confident. Bay because it's 
it's pretty rough with the storm. Last night we anchored again with Riker and Indigo Seas. And um, we've anchored with Indigo Seas. I guess this is the third night that we've anchored with them. Um, and we had dinner, to all dinner together. Everyone's been so nice because I um, have a hard time getting on and off the boat because it's such different heights. <laughs> so everyone else is like, that's fine, we'll come to your boat. I'm like, okay, thank you. But um, so we've been hosting it here dinner the last uh, four or five nights, I guess. We've had dinner on the boat because there's no place to get off. You're just anchored in the middle of nowhere. The anchorage last night was really pretty though. But tonight we should be at um, Mobile in Mobile. And I believe tomorrow is going to be a pretty day. And um, we're going to be traveling across Mobile Bay and potentially crossing our wake tomorrow. I can't believe that. It's hard, it's hard to believe that that's that we're about to end. I guess it always does. It comes to an end. We had a storm come through this morning. And it rained on us like you wouldn't believe while we were getting off anchor. But um, it's, it cleared up for a while. It's starting to get cloudy again, but it was clear for a while. But I tell you what, it was a warm front that came through. I don't have a jacket on. I don't have thermals on. I'm so happy. <laughs> I, they said it was supposed to be 70 degrees today. I don't think it's 70 degrees yet, but I'm not wearing a jacket, so I think that's that's a win for me. I'm so ready for warm weather. Well, we ended up staying at the convention center, Mobile Convention Center dock, um, and it was right downtown, and spent the night. It was and got up the next morning. I think we left about 6.30 or so because we had a long way to go. While we were there, the Pinta um, boat, ship I guess, um, came and stayed at the same dock as us. It was like a replica of the Columbus's, you know, ships, the pink dock. It was pretty cool. It was cool. We pulled away and it was maybe three or four miles down to the bay. And uh, here it is. Yeah, entering the bay. We left the convention center this morning at 6.30. It was beautiful weather. It was and still very early in the Mobile morning, convention but there was center. no wind and, and we as predicted. And we, uh, we headed down the bay. It was a good um, we'll be crossing you know, our 20 miles probably down. To, oh, at least. To the yeah. intercoastal. Yeah. And as soon as we got into the bay, the pelicans started coming, which uh, I love. It was like a greeting <laughs> from them and the seagulls. And then right away, I mean, immediately the dolphins started showing up. Uh, I just, I've missed dolphins. They're just so beautiful. And these were swimming on the side of the boat, not on the bow, which was very unique. I haven't seen them do that before. I think they were happy to see us. I think so too. It was a beautiful day on the bay. We were lucky, but there was no, it was the weather, the wave condition was really great. I was sitting there as we were going across the bay and I was wondering, I wonder how much longer I'm going to have to sit at the helm and drive the boat. So I started videotaping just the look of the bridge mm -hmm. from the driver's seat. It really has been, the boat has done really well and uh, hasn't given us any trouble really. So it started every day. I mean, it's made it up ahead. mile after mile after mile waterway and once we get there we'll be crossing our way. Today is the 400th day of the moon for us. Um, obviously we didn't travel all those days. Lots of days for Red Acre or Marina. 
seen Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic Ocean, the St. Lawrence, and the Great Lakes. All those places were pretty, but as soon as we pulled into Mobile Bay, and the dolphins started coming to the boat, and the pelicans were flying around and diving in the water, and seagulls are around. That's my place. I much prefer this. we keep the boat and we can do some exploring around the Mississippi and Atlanta I mean Mississippi and Alabama and Florida coast do some fishing have some fun I'm ready for it to be warm He asked me what the biggest mistake of the loop was. I bought five bathing suits and I never wore any of them. I think I went swimming twice. Well, the first stop that we made um, when we started our loop was at the Wharf Marina at Orange Beach to get fuel. And as we ended our loop, we stopped at the same place and got fuel again. But this is where we're going to um, spend a couple of days. So we backed out and, and traveled, you know, just a, a little way, <laughs> just down the, the, the way and got into our, our slip. I remember when we first did this, they asked us if we wanted to go get into one of these slips and we were so new at this. We were both like, I don't think so. I think we're just gonna anchor out. But Chris did like a champion. He did a great job. He's really, he really has a command of the, of the, of the boat. I'm super proud that he's been able to do that. Yeah. And, uh, there was, you know, Sven and Cotty were there where we had already gotten into their slip because they didn't get gas and they were over at our slip, you know, clapping and screaming because <laughs> we had finished our loop. Yeah. And the dock guys, they were very nice and pulled into a big beautiful slip this marina is off the chart gorgeous yes there's all kinds of restaurants and an ice skating ring and a movie theater and shops and it's you know it's beautiful and the dot guy came and there's Finn taking pictures they've been a real treat for us to be with them on the loop oh absolutely and, uh, and they were very yeah. happy to see us get our gold flag. They've been wonderful and a, a joy to travel with. So happy. So you have a white flag when you're doing the loop. And once you've done it once, you get a gold flag. And this is a, our gold flag. We had some champagne. And um, the hardest part of the loop was getting the cork out of the champagne. <laughs> it took me forever. It was really stuck. <laughs> But uh, I, find, I think eventually I got it. The champagne, was, the champagne was good too. There we go. <laughs> and people were watching and congratulating yeah, us. Yeah, everybody's uh, been wonderful. Yeah. So excited for us, and it's such a, a camaraderie because you know you're so happy for other people when they finish, and people are so happy for you. So crossing your wake is a really big deal. What an adventure it's been. I'm so glad we did it. Oh, yeah. We did it. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and for um, following us all this time. We really appreciate it. Um, we've had a 
fabulous, fabulous time. And we don't want it to end. We're not sure exactly what's going to happen next. Um, but we know the adventure is going to continue. So. Well, we'll keep you posted. We'll, we, in the next few weeks, we'll have decided what's going to happen. So uh, stay tuned. I don't think this is going to be the end of it. Um, and if you're thinking about doing the loop, go for it. It's, a, it's well worth it. It's well worth it. It was a wonderful time. Yes. Yeah. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for the subscribing and leaving comments and all your support. And keep a watch out for us. We're going to something else, we're get, we'll let you know what, what, what our next steps are going to be. Yes. Thanks again for everybody. We had a great time. And thanks for watching.